don't mind me just hanging out with my friends on my phone because who hangs out with anybody in real life anymore honestly the more i think about it i probably interact with most of my friends about 90 percent on my phone we don't hang out as much we don't grab drinks we don't do all the things i feel like i used to do i just really like pictures and dms and we comment or send each other memes but i'm missing the in-person connection and i need that i have three friends coming over today two of them that i met because of the internet the other is one that i like to call one of my internet cousins and we're actually going to meet for the first time today so we're going to have a really great conversation just about struggling to have friends in the digital age and really how to preserve friendships as your life changes a lot of us are creatives and that has posed a lot of problems in keeping friends that you've had when you were young and as life and things happen as life does. So stay tuned for the conversation. Welcome back guys. We are here with three of my friends in real life. I'm so excited. <laughs> so a little fun fact as I am going to give you guys my little fun facts when I introduce everybody. I have Marsha Badger here. Marsha and I met because when I first moved to New York, back to New York from Atlanta in 2014, Okay. I had a uh, what yeah. I had a meetup, right? Because I was yeah. like, what did I have? I'm always like coming up with ideas what for stuff. So yeah, so I had a meetup. Marsha came, you covered mm -hmm. it for your blog. Yes. And from then on, we have like become like internet big sister, little yes. sister. And I want to talk more about how we developed that relationship. But Danielle. James. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> now, Jan Danielle is my sorority sister, but that's not how we met. We met through another good friend of mine named Larry. That I, and Larry introduced us. I introduced you then to Periscope. You did. Yeah. We built a whole like online relationship, and now like are here in New York, like d living our lives and being girlfriends, and we live like three blocks from each other. We do. So this is another <laughs> relationship that was like built off of a digital connection and blossomed. And now for this gentleman who is here with all the ladies today. Lucky thing, right? Yes, Mikkel Clark. <laughs> Mikkel and I are meeting today for the very first time. You are what I would call, I guess, you know, people say an internet cousin. Something like that, we've yeah. Been, yeah, we've been following mm -hmm. each other on almost all the platforms and have always interacted but never met in person. And when I was really thinking about this conversation today, I wanted people that I had been able to develop relationships with in real ones. And to see also what that perspective is from someone that, you know, taking the step off, you know, off, online to offline and how we got here today. Now, one thing that I've struggled about I feel like these days I'm on my phone and I do interact with friends, but I still spend so much time by myself that some weekends I'll think that I've gone out and done things and I realize, no, yeah. I've just been home like scrolling. commenting and scrolling yeah. Yeah. and sending things back and forth, yeah. but I never have really actually been a participant, mm -hmm. you know, with my friends anymore. I don't know. How has it been for you guys? It's the same. It's like I can watch your IG right. live and I'm there. Right. I don't need to, I don't need to be there. I'm exactly. There. I'm yeah. watching it. And you see the same things happen every weekend. It's like, what do I have to do anymore? I can right. see the same same club venues, same parties, so mm -hmm. I don't have to go out with you. you know? Right, I can just sit there and mm -hmm. watch you, like it, comment, like, oh, do your thing, like, mm -hmm. fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I have friends that live, like, all over, mm -hmm. like, even internationally, too. So it's like, sometimes it's like a little visual into mm -hmm. what's going on with them, and I feel like I'm right there when I, like, see their kids yeah. or things mm -hmm. like that. I have friends, I haven't even met their kids, so I've been, like, watching right, them. Right, watching yeah. them grow yeah. up. Now, one thing I've felt lately, it's weird to admit this because I feel like that I'm someone that's very social, mm -hmm. but lately, because I, as a creative, I don't work in an office anymore and I spend so much time by myself, I've found that when I do have to go in social settings now, I almost feel, like, a little socially awkward. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. What do you yeah. mean by socially awkward? Tell me it's, more. It feels like I have to, like, it almost feels like a stretch to, like, have conversations yeah. with new people um, and, like, mm -hmm. go through those motions because I think I'm just so used now to just being on my phone and just saying, yeah. like, hey. Yeah. And it's, so when I have to, like, do that whole brand new interaction now with people, I'm noticing that I start to feel a little anxiety. Mm -hmm. And that's weird for me because that's never happened. But I think it's because I just, I'm so used to now interacting most of the time on my phone. I think that's that's me in general, mm, just okay. socially awkward. So I thank God for my phone because it <laughs> saves me from having to, you know, engage, which is sad. Mm -hmm. um, I've sort of forced myself to be out there, yeah. be like you know, put your phone away mm -hmm. and be present. Contact, I know, mm -hmm. you know, but I think it's not common 
it's not uncommon to sit at a table and everyone it's just on their phone right yeah Yeah. i've really been trying to change that Mm -hmm. though and to really be present when i'm with people to look at people because the conversation just kind of changes and when you're fully present when you're fully there with someone now one of the things that's been making me actually sad and adding to this, like, I feel like digital isolation that I'm feeling is that I have friends that are, you know, not as, as, as active online as I do. And as we know, not to say all my business is online, but <laughs> I live my life. I'm online. I'm on, I'm on all the platforms. We're watching me now. Mm-hmm. And I've had friends that I've had for years and they don't hit me as much or I'll say, hey, like, we should do this. Or why didn't you let me know about X, Y, Z? And they'll say, oh, we thought you were busy or we saw you were on this trip or, you know, and I just want to tell them I am not that busy. Like, we yeah, are yes. friends for real and I think that's what's also hard is that people get a perception of what your life is based on what they see and you're just like I do miss having like friends that I can like touch and like have those real connections with and come take my weave out you know what I mean (laughs) and those things yeah because the thing is this and that's also I say one of my like black girl markers of friendship is if I trust you to take out my weave because it's very intimate. Like I'm yeah. sitting, you know, it takes you back to like childhood with your yeah. mother. Like you're mm-hmm. sitting on the floor between her knees. You're talking about life. You're seeing me when I take, you know, all the danger plates. Ex- right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like all of the things, yeah. you know. And yeah. it's just those are moments. But it was funny. I had it was a few months ago before I did this though, and I needed to get my sewing taken down. And I don't know if you were out of town, but it was like I realized I used to have like people that I would call. And I got really sad because I was like, I don't have anybody to call mm-hmm. to take my wave out. And I, it sounded crazy when I said it, but I knew it was just this feeling of as your life changes, mm-hmm. realizing that like yeah. people that fit certain places don't move to those next places. And I just didn't really have as many people that were that close as I thought. I've been struggling with that too. And it's like, I've also been really making it a purpose to be verbal with my friends mm-hmm. about it. Like, like, I will make the time yes. for you. And I feel like that's something that they think, because if they see the busyness, right. or they see, they're like, oh, well, but like, I've been getting like FOMO. Like, my friends will be taking trips. And I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. But like, well, you were traveling. I was like, but if I knew, I, I would have organized this exactly. to, like, to do this. Yeah, so I think exactly. it's really just verbalizing with them. And then also, I think another thing is, is that we do live interesting lives that not also everybody else wants yeah. to live as well, mm-hmm. too. So I've also had to be very careful, because I have friends who are like, I don't want to be on your IG story. Mm. <laughs> right. No, it's yeah. true because everybody yeah. does it. You know, yeah. I had like, that happen with some friends and I make it a point now. I don't necessarily, yeah. like, I don't post their kids. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I don't do things as much on my feed. I may put IG stories because that goes away. But mm-hmm. even then I'll ask, like, are you yeah. okay? Because yeah. you just forget, like, people come on your page and then they go on their pages and they're mm-hmm. clicking. And everybody, mm-hmm. just because we're choosing to say, like, hey, look at all my business, yeah. everybody yeah. else, you know, isn't doing that. My mm-hmm. friends know not to invite me to a club. I'm not going. <laughs> like, I... Let's go to brunch. Yeah. Let's go to breakfast. Let's mm-hmm. go to dinner that's before nine o'clock. Like, let, let's, you know, <laughs> Marsh, like, these are the things. Yeah. 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 And so that's where we connect. Mm-hmm. So it, having that common ground where you guys have that level where you can connect with each other. And realistic expectations. Because realistic then people expectations. aren't disappointed. Like, well, yeah. I do. I always ask you and you don't go. It's like, right. well, yeah. you're always asking me the things that you know I don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's, like you said, find the common ground. Yeah. 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 Now, I want to switch gears with you a little bit because you have been tweeting recently about like people and like wanting people to be there for you but maybe they don't understand and for giving sure. people like room to grow for sure yeah i've been kind of working past this feeling of being others in certain spaces because mm, okay. i i think out of the friends i grew up with it's always that close circle of friends maybe yeah. like four or five people who mm-hmm. you're, you're used to being around y'all always mm-hmm. kick it you always talk your yes. trash or whatever mm-hmm. else and you know I, i've done pretty well you know socially online and everything mm-hmm. And I start getting like, oh, Mikhail's different. He thinks he's uh, a celebrity. Uh, he thinks he's famous, you know, whatever else. And I, I hate Mikhail. I hate that word because I'm still like, I still want to be, you know, with my close friends. Yeah. I want the same relationship and the same energy. Mm-hmm. So it's like when they start kind of othering me and, oh, you wouldn't have time. And, mm-hmm. oh, you want to come with the regular folks and hang out. It's like, nah, like I'm I'm yeah. still the same way with you. Yeah, so like that's you that's my that? job. You know, you don't switch jobs and act differently around me. So if I have a... A new thing happening let's keep that same energy so i had to kind of realize like you know you have different friends for different things sometimes Mm -hmm. like yes you can't talk about like the social media influencer struggle with your friends a teacher you know, yeah, you right. Because they you know, just it's work, just, a lot of people yeah. think we're just yeah. playing on our phones. It's real yeah. different. And I'm just, yeah. Or that we're vain. Mm-hmm. That too. Yeah. Or that yeah. We're vain. I, I think it's also it's like we have to realize that you know the internet hasn't even been around for 
30 years. Right, which yeah. is crazy. So mm -hmm. I think that we're really the guinea pigs for all of this yeah. and how it's affecting and how it's changed. So it's in real time. Like, there's no blueprint yeah. to like see we're what we're figuring gonna, it out. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also interesting that uh, of the perception of your social media posts mm -hmm. because people will see a photo of you. <laughs> you know, with some celebrity, and they'll be like, oh, you're out there, you're meeting people. <laughs> it's like, you do realize that was two seconds, right, I like, was, there was a line of people, <laughs> and they like, stand there, smile next, you know. Like you like, got your shot, it went on. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not what it seems, it's yeah. not what it yeah. looks like. I have friends thought that I actually had Kanye West on speed dial. Like, oh, you know, you run a hip hop <laughs> site, just, I'm, that's not how it works. Like, <laughs> like, that's yeah, never so, how it works, yeah. you know. So, now, Daniel, I know for you, like, you're the style and beauty editor of Hello Beautiful, which is, like, one of the largest platforms for black women. And you do, like, you, I, like, I go, I'm like, she's my friend. And I go, <laughs> I'm like, Danielle is here. Danielle is there. I mean, how are you able to manage, like, the workload? You have your own company, like, Model mm -hmm. Citizen, and then, like, still trying to have an actual life with, like, you know, with your friends. Like, yeah. balancing all of these things. Well, now, girl, now head of partnerships for Ooh. style and beauty. Oh, for... excuse me. <laughs> But it's like, again, it's just something that I have really focused and, mm -hmm. and made a point about, um, especially with, with like my life, with like my family, mm -hmm. you know, with my friends, like it's been honesty. I've been okay. really honest, um, open about what I need, like mm -hmm. open about like the yeah. triggers as yeah, well yeah. too. Like, I'm like, I'm going to be upset if I yeah. see everybody on a vacation and no one thought about inviting me. And That's I'm like, even if I have to, to say, say no. Like, I still want you to Give invite me, me because yeah. I need to, I'll like move my schedule around yeah. to yeah. do these kinds of yeah. things. Mm -hmm. um, and just really making it a focus. Like, it's a, like, I don't want to call it a job, but it's like another job. But another thing has really been self care for me, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm very open. Like, sometimes, like, I remember last Saturday was the first Saturday that I did not, I was not traveling. Yeah, I didn't have anything to, to do. And I stayed in bed all day. And I was okay, and then and then not the feeling yes. guilty about it, right? Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes you, when you are always doing, producing, creating, mm -hmm. do you ever feel guilty for when you just stop and yes. do nothing? Right. Yes. And yes, so absolutely. like to just losing that guilt, like mm -hmm. I'm I'm okay with this, or even when I start doing things with friends, like less drinking, more like let's maybe go to a massage like or doing let's it. like do things like connect. like yeah. you know let's maybe work out together yeah. and then grab it, just like different things other than just like drinking all yeah. the time together. <laughs> One of the things this year I try to do, uh, you know, my birthday is in December, so at the end of every year I always say, you know, set my intentions for the new year. And at the end of last year I said, you know, this year I wanted to really try to concentrate on relationships. Mm -hmm. Have, do some things for myself where I'm just hanging out with my friends that is not an event. Because yeah, I used yeah. to tell myself, well, oh, I'm being social, I'm hanging out with my friends, but it would still be work. Yeah. So I literally now have, I've made like a schedule for myself Thursday is a social day. Like Thursday is my day that I either have to have drinks with somebody, I have to go to dinner. Mm -hmm. Friday is another day where I have to do something that involves like interacting with other people. Mm -hmm. Because I literally was like going like weeks at a time where I wouldn't see people. The only people mm -hmm. I saw were people that had something to do with something work related. Right. Mm -hmm. This is sometimes can be a sore spot. And I, it's different I think for men and women that I'm noticing and I would love for you to weigh on in okay. on this. I've noticed that as my life has changed, I definitely have had, like, have, in order to survive, have had to get, like, new sets of friends. Mm -hmm. like, uh, like, after college, when a lot of friends got married, I didn't, I moved to New York, I've made a new set of friends in yeah. New York that kind of helped me survive, like, that set. And even now, like, as friends are, you know, it's just, as, especially for women, I think when, we, when your friends start to marry and have children, mm -hmm. you realize that you lose your friends mm -hmm. for yeah. a few years. You do yeah. get them, you do get them back. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, you can be in support of them, but they just, like, their lives are totally different, especially mm -hmm. if you're, you know, you're very single and, you know, doing those things. Yeah. And sometimes I struggle with wondering, like, am I throwing away friends every four years and getting new friends? Because, I mean, I still have them. But I've noticed sometimes with men that you all seem to do a better job of keeping like your crew. It's like the wood. You know what I mean? The wood. The best <laughs> man. I always think of those movies because I feel like with a lot of my guy friends, yeah. their crew is like has been their crew. And I think with women, we almost maybe compartmentalize our friends. I mean, the wood sounds great. I went to <laughs> I went to a military academy when I left high school, okay. so I had a hard reset button on almost all of my friendships gotcha. when I when okay. I was eighteen. Um, so probably wouldn't apply to me. And honestly, I feel more aligned with the compartmentalized thing as okay. well. So my thing is always just being comfortable with like, hey, I'm I'm changing. Like I'm yeah. growing in different ways. So I can accept that certain friendships might, you know, fall apart a little bit or, yeah. or fall back or what have you. But not being afraid of seeing change with, you know, who I am and who I'm around. I yeah, think it's been right. a 
a big thing for mm -hmm. me, like personally, to kind of grow into. We have to honor the seasons, though. Everything mm -hmm. is a yes. season. Yes. And I think we get so attached to the idea of this is, we have this great connection. I can't believe we're, we're not friends anymore. But like, see what that was. Maybe th there's a purpose for that friendship, right. and that mm -hmm. purpose is no longer, you know, yeah. no longer relevant. So I think that we're all always we're meant to evolve like I think if you're yes. not evolving and if you're not growing yeah. that like there's something wrong there's no such thing as stagnation like I have a best friend and has been my best friend mm -hmm. since college and we have remained best friends like throughout like the time but again like it's like you put in the work and the, the yeah. time too and I remember we I had a conversation because I was like I see friends that have like every Monday they do something right. they're like mm -hmm. we travel we're working. They're like, when are we going to, we can't right. have that. Like, yeah. that's not going to be. And so also knowing that the, what a way a friendship looks can yeah. change, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and then like also then having the security within yes. your friendship to know that we don't have to talk every day. Some yeah. of my closest friends, like some of my best friends, I, I haven't seen in years. Same. Yeah. Like in person. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So, I want to thank you all for coming. I'm like, and be my friends in real life. Nice <laughs> No, this really means a lot to me because, again, this is even for me, you know, this is like my friendship love language is like having those people that will be yeah. there for you and support you. So I'm just excited about everything that you guys have going on. So Facebook family, I hope you have enjoyed this conversation today and it will help you in navigating your friendships in real life. Take it offline. Like this, this is good. Like we're not on, well, my phone did go off. <laughs> but we're not on our phones and I just you know really appreciate you guys if you all want to keep the conversation going please let us know in the comments make sure to subscribe and I want to leave with just a quote that I found about friendship that was really special to me it says that if you have received the gift of friendship you have absolutely received the greatest gift mm -hmm. and I just definitely have found a gift in all of you so we will see you <laughs> we will see you next week bye guys <laughs>